Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Wednesday, October 12, 2022. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's Major League Baseball playoff games and look ahead to today's two National League Division Series games. NHL opening night was last night. We'll look ahead to tonight's games. We have a college football game to talk about. NBA preseason, golf, NBA small forward rankings, Dancing with the Stars, Mass Singer Survivor. So we're doing all reality TV today. We'll squeeze it all in. And then news and notes and best bet. We'll start at the baseball playoffs. Um, all the game ones were today in the division series. Or I'm sorry, yesterday, I should say. And some interesting games as well. All of them were close, too, by the way. Um, Yankees or Phillies over the Braves, 7-6 to six to take a 1-0 series lead. Sir Anthony to make it to win. Max Fried the loss. Braves scored three in the bottom of the ninth to make it closer than it really was. Astros come back from 7-3 down to knock off the Mariners 8-7 on a three-run walk-off home run by Jordan Alvarez to take a 1-0 series lead. Rafael Montero, the win, and Robbie Ray lost a terrible managerial decision by Scott Cervais to put in his starter, Robbie Ray, to close the game. Yankees over to Guardians 4-1 to take a 1-0 series lead. Garrett Cole, the win. Cal Quantrill, the loss. And there was a lot of crazy things in that game. Josh Donaldson thinking he had a home run. But the ball bounces back into the stadium. And they called it a double in and out because he didn't hustle. And then the Dodgers knock off the Padres 5-3. So best bet ended up being a winner. As the Dodgers took a 1-0 series. Eight, Julio Urias to win. Mike Clevenger to loss. And getting the save was Chris Martin. As the Dodgers um, look like they're going to blow him out. But... um. Padres had a good fifth inning to keep that game interesting. So two games today, 4-3 on Fox. We have the Phillies against the Braves from Atlanta. Um, Braves looking to even up this series back at one of Peace Phillies looking to go up to a back going to the Philadelphia. Zach Wheeler and Kyle Wright are the starters. Braves minus 146, Phillies plus 124, over under 7. Overs minus 120, unders minus 102. Phillies plus 1.5 is minus 184. Braves minus 1.5 at plus 152. I think that these offenses will still get some big hits when needed, but under 7 plus one of two is the pick. And 8.30 on Fox Sports 20 of the Padres against the Dodgers. Hugh Darvish and Clayton Kershaw. Old school pitching matchup. Dodgers minus 184. Padres plus 154. Over under 7. Over is minus 115. Under is minus 105. Padres plus 1.5 is minus 137. Dodgers minus 1.5 is plus 114. Dodgers run lines the pick again. I just don't think that the Padres will stay within one run. They're lucky to stay within two runs yesterday. Dodgers run line again, minus one half at plus 114. Now move on to the NHL. Um, we had opening night last night, and a lot of teams start their seasons today. Lightning go to MS3, and they lose... To the Rangers, 3-2 to two, as the Rangers um get off to a good start to their season. They are 1-0-0. Tampa's 0-1-1 or 0-1-0. The number three started the game with an assist. Jacob Trooper, number two, started the game with a goal. Bark the Goodrow, number one, started the game with two goals. Mika Sabanajad. And the Golden Knights over to Kings, 4-3. to three. The Golden Knights are 1-0-0. Kings are 0-1-0. Number three started the game with 47 saves on 51 shots. Jonathan Quick, he kept them in that game. Number two started the game with a goal and assist. William Carlson, number one, started the game with a goal and assist. Gabriel Velarde in defeat, too, by the way. All right, a lot of games today, as I mentioned. Or actually, it's not a lot. It's six. So 12 teams get underway today. 7 o'clock, you have the Blue Jackets against the Hurricanes. Um, the Canes are minus 260. The Jackets are plus 210 over under 6. Over is minus 115. Under is minus 105. Jackets plus one half is minus 124. Kings minus one half is plus 102. Um, I like the over in that game. I think the Kings offense will get off to a good start in the game. Maple Leafs, Canadians. Leafs minus 280. Hives plus 225. Over under 6 and a half. Over is minus 134. Under is plus 110. Leafs minus one half is minus 115. Canadians plus one half is minus 105. I'm going with the under because I just don't see Montreal's offense scoring with Toronto. I can see this being like 4 1 Maple Leafs. On TNT, Bruins Capitals. You would think this would be Brendan Burke 
and Darren Pang. But Kenny Albert should be on this game, but they're going to play him in Colorado because that's the uh, Stanley Cup uh, banner race. So Caps minus 144, Bruins plus 120, over on their 6, over is minus 120, and there's minus 102. Bruins plus 1 half is minus 210, Caps minus 1 half is plus 168. These were the two teams that came down for for the final, my final wild card pick. But I'm going to go with the Capitals in regulation at plus 110. 9-30 TNT, Blackhawks Avalanche. So Avs raised the banner against the terrible Blackhawks. The Avs are minus 450. The Blackhawks are plus 340 over under 6.5. Over is minus 124. There's even money. Blackhawks plus 2.5 is minus 140. Avs minus 2.5 is plus 112. Now you're seeing the plus 2.5 on opening night. How often are you ever going to see that? Probably never again. Um. So. Hmm. This is a tough one. We'll go with the first period. And we're going to go under one and a half goals in the first period of plus 136. Because I could see the Avs kind of getting off to a slow start. Kind of similar to uh, Rangers Tampa yesterday. Both teams got off to a slow start. Um, Kraken Ducks. Ducks minus 120. Kraken even money over on their six. Over is minus 105. Under is minus 115. Kraken plus one half is minus 250. Ducks minus one half is plus 198. I like the over a lot in that game. And also Canucks Oilers. That's a decent game. Oilers minus 188, Canucks plus 155, over under 6.5, over is minus 105, under is minus 114. Canucks plus 1.5 is minus 170, Oilers minus 1.5 is plus 136. I'm going to try to at least pick one upset um, per day in hockey. For me, it's the Canucks today. Let's go with Vancouver plus 155 to upset the Oilers on opening night. All right, college football. Um... There's one game on the docket for tonight. It is a Sun Belt game. It is Louisiana and Marshall. Um, Marshall's giving 10.5. Total is 46.5. So the total went down from last night. Um, I'm going to take... Louisiana getting the points. Louisiana hasn't been themselves this year. Um, I just think this is a closer game than their double-digit game. So give me Louisiana plus 10.5. I project 5.5 and, and 45 and 4 fifths. All right, now I'll move on to the NBA preseason. Um, we'll go over the games from yesterday and look ahead to today's preseason action. Thunder over to Pistons, 115 to 99. Magic over to Grizzlies, 109 to 105. Bulls over to Bucks, 127 to 104. Spurs over to Jazz, 111 to 104. And the Warriors over the Blazers, 131 to 98. Today, 7 o'clock, you have the Knicks at the Pacers from Indiana. Um, this is um, really not a good game. Uh, Knicks are four-point favorites on the road. Um, the Knicks' two preseason games are home games. This is a road game. Um, it's irrelevant. Um, they're better than Indiana. I'm going to lay the four. Hawks-Cavaliers. The Cavs are two-point home favorites. I'll lay it. Hornets, 76ers. Philly's giving eight and a half. That's a lot for a preseason game. I hate it, but give me Charlotte the cover. Pelicans Heat, Heat are giving four, giving New Orleans. I think New Orleans wins. They're plus 142. On ESPN at 730, of the Nets against the Bucs. The Bucs are three-point home favorites. No Middleton makes me... Mm, but it's the preseason, though. You can't really overreact. And we'll take the Nets getting the three. 1030, ESPN, Timberwolves, Lakers. I feel like we saw this on ESPN already. The Lakers are two and a half my favorites, giving Minnesota plus two and a half and plus 114 outright. King Suns, the Suns are giving six. Give me Sacramento getting the six. And 10-30 to the Nuggets against the Clippers. Clippers are three and a half point favorites. Give me Denver plus the three. And the hook. All right, now I'll move on to golf. Um, we have another tournament coming up. 
And this one is the Zozo Championship from Accordia Golf Narasino Country Club. And that is... in Japan. So that's a little different. So this actually starts tonight. So 7.50 p.m. Eastern is the first tee times. You have Sam Ryder, Christian Ziedenhout, Danny Lee, Troy Merritt, Adam Long, just can go through notables, 801, uh, Michael Wallace, Brandon Wu, Kevin Stroman, Russell Knox, 812, Chad Ramey, Taylor Moore, Ricky Fowler, Chesar V, James Hoff. 823, JJ Spawn, Sai Kim, Victor Hovland, Cam Young, Seb Straka, Luke Glist. 834, Xander Shoffley, Corey Connors, Hideki Matsuyama, Tyrell Hatton, Sodi Kudiara, Peter Molnati. 845, Sahith Thiglia, Scott Stallings, Bayo Hosser, Dylan Fratelli. 856, Davis Riley, Kurt Katayama, Alex Smalley, Adam Spevson, 907, Adam Shank, Brandon Steele, Adam Pontno, Emiliano Grio, 918, Aaron Ray, Mito Pereira, Hayden Buckley, Patrick Rogers, Maverick McNeely, 929, Colin Morikawa, Sebastian Munoz, Camp Champ, Taylor Hogue, Martin Laird, Mackenzie Hughes. 9.40, Joel Dahman, Cam Davis, Sun M, Lucas Herbert, Kyungu Lee. 9.51, Stefan Yeager, Matthew Neesmith, Mark Hubbard, Wyndham Clark, and Tommy Fleetwood. 10.02, Lucas Hodges, Keegan Bradley, Davis Lipsky. So this is a smaller tournament than you would think. Um, my pick for this tournament, I would go with one of my favorite golfers that I like to bet on. He's fourteen to one. I knew Xander would be the favorite, but I'm going with Colin Morikawa at fourteen to one to win the Zozo Championship. All right, now I'm going to do my NBA small forward rankings. Um, This is an interesting list. There's some players that you think are small forwards that are listed as shooting guards or power forwards or even point guards for that matter. So without further ado, there's 88 players on the list. And it's each team's top two or three on the depth chart depending on injuries and number of each of position on the depth chart. 88, Jared Roden, Trailblazers. 87, Justin Lewis, Bulls. 86, Vince Williams, Grizzlies. 85, Farron Hunt, Knicks. 84, Jamal Kane, Heat. 83, Josh Minot, Timberwolves. 82, Eugene Omori, Thunder. 81, Haywood Highsmith, Heat. 80, Ish Wainwright, Suns. 79, Theo Pinson, Mavericks. 78, Devon Reed, Nuggets. 77, Caleb Houston, Magic. 76, Dean Wade, Cavaliers. 75, Kaitlyn Martin, Pelicans. 74, Kessler Edwards, Nets. 73, KZ Okpala, Kings. 72, Aaron Neesmith, Pacers. 71, Kevin Knox, Pistons. 70, Juancho Hernan Gomez, Raptors. 69, Stanley Johnson, Jazz. 68, Troy Brown Jr., Lakers. 67, Amir Coffey, Clippers. 66, Max Christie, Lakers. 65, Jake Ravia Grizzlies, 64, Marjan Beecham, Bucks, 63, Wendell Moore Jr., Timberwolves, 62, Kendall Brown, Pacers, 61, Oche Agbaji, Jazz, 60, A.J. Griffin, Hawks, 59, Joshua Primo, Spurs, 58, Andre Iguodala, Warriors, 57, Kent Bazemore, Kings, 56, Josh Green, Mavericks, 55, Josh Okogie, Suns, 54, Javante Green, Bulls, 53, Aaron Wiggins, Thunder, 52, Taylor Horton, Tucker, Lakers, 51, Isaiah Livers, Pistons, 50, Josh Christopher, Rockets, 49, 
Nasir Little, Trailblazers, 48, Trey Murphy, the third, Pelicans, 47, Denny of Deja, Wizards, 46, Matisse Thibel, 76ers, 45, Daniel House Jr., 76ers, 44, Justin Holiday, Hawks, 43, Corey Kispert, Wizards, 42, Sam Hauser, Celtics, 41, Otto Porter, Raptors, 40, Jordan Nawara, Bucks, 39, C.D. Osmond, Cavaliers, 38, Kyle Anderson, Timberwolves, 37, Doug McDermott, Spurs, 36, Dante DiVincenzo, Warriors, 35, Nicholas Batum, Clippers, 34, Jay Sean Tate, Rockets, 33, Royce O'Neal, Nets, 32, Bruce Brown, Nuggets, 31, Kelly Oubre Jr., Hornets, 30, Josh Richardson, Spurs, 29, Cam Reddish, Knicks, 28, Eric Gordon, Rockets, 27, Reggie Bullock, Mavericks, 26, Terrence Ross, Magic, 25, Will Barton, Wizards, 24, Isaac Okoro, Cavaliers, 23, Evan Fournier, Knicks, 22, Gordon Hayward, Hornets, 21, Josh Hart, Trailblazers, 20, DeAndre Hunter, Hawks, 19, Sadiq Bay, Pistons, 18, Ben Simmons, Nets, 17, Franz Wagner, Magic, 16, Dylan Brooks, Grizzlies, 15, Buddy Heald, Pacers, 14, Lou Gwentz, Dort, Thunder, 13, Mikael Bridges, Suns, 12, Michael Porter Jr., Nuggets, 11, Harrison Barnes, Kings, 10, OJ Ananobi, Raptors, 9, DeMar DeRozan, Bulls, 8, Tobias Harris, 76ers, 7, Chris Middleton, Bucks, 6, Andrew Wiggins, Warriors, 5, Brandon Ingram, Pelicans, 4, Jalen Brown, Celtics, 3, Jimmy Butler, Heat, 2, Paul George, Clippers, and number 1, the best basketball player I will ever remember watching on a regular basis, LeBron James, Los Angeles Lakers, um, LeBron still being number one on this list is a detriment to A, that he hasn't showed signs of being washed up yet, unlike other GOATs have recently, like Tom Brady. But in the negative, it also shows that the small forward position is weak in terms of big-time star power. And that some guys that usually would be small forwards, like Luka Doncic, are listed as point guards this year. So that's also a case. To me, the easy top three is LeBron, Paul George, and Jimmy Butler. And then it's that group of Jalen, Brendan Ingram, Wiggins, Middleton. And then guys from Tobias all the way down to... I'd say Michael Porter Jr. So, guys, 11 and 12 on the list. So, Harrison Barnes and Michael Porter Jr. deserve an argument for top 10 on the list. So, I think this is a deep group and not a top-heavy group. And I meant weak in terms of lack of top-heavy, not in terms of depth of the position. So, there you have it. Tomorrow's will be powered forward rankings. Um... Dancing with the Stars from Monday night. We'll recap the episode. Um, It was an interesting episode, to say the least. Um, So, this um, week was 60 years of James Bond. Each pair performed one dance to a song from a James Bond film. And the Argentine tango and samba were introduced. Um... And then Joseph Baina again performed with Alexis Ward due to uh, Daniela Karagach recovering from COVID. Charlie and Mark went first and did a rumba dance to No Time to Die by Billie Eilish from No Time to Die. They got a 33. Cheryl and Lewis did a rumba dance to Diamonds Are Forever. Oh, wait a minute. I feel like that was last week. Yeah, you know what? That was last week. So this week was Disney night. So that's my mistake. Um, And then Jennifer Lewis performed Dig a Little Deeper from... uh, For uh, Changelis Charleston. And the dance troupe also did routines to Columbia Meet Encanto from Encanto. That's how you know from Enchant and Try Everything from Zootopia. 
So that's my mistake I was doing last week. So, again, I was just going to say, I'm sure Lewis got him voted out last week. All right, so first up was Joseph and Daniela. So Daniela came back. So they did a Charleston dance to A Star is Born from Hercules. And they got a 28. Sam and Cheryl did a Paso Doble dance to The Greatest Show from The Greatest Showman and got a 25. Jordan and Brandon did a jazz dance to Remember Me from Coco and got a 34. Wayne and Whitney did a jazz dance to Wait For It from Hamilton and got a 36. Daniel and Britt did a quick step to Finally Free from High School Musical and got a 29. Shangela and Gleb did a Charleston to dig a, little, dig a Little Deeper from The Princess and the Frog and got a 32. Heidi and Artem did a Vanette Wells to Chim Chim Cheri from Mary Poppins and got a 34. Gabby and Val did the Quick Step to Mr. Blue Sky from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and got a 36. Trevor and Emma did a Samba dance to Life is a Highway from Cars and got a 28. Vinny and Coco did a Samba to... Uh, El Gato e la Volpe from Luca. He got a 29. Selma and Sasha did a quick step to the Muppet Show theme from the Muppet Show and got a 32. Jesse and Alan did a jive dance to One Way or Another from Hocus Pocus 2 and got a 31. And Charlie and Mark did a jazz to the Simpsons main theme from The Simpsons and got a 36. The judges votes to save. Carrie Ann voted to save Trevor and Emma, as did Bruno and Derek. Len did not vote, but would have voted to save Trevor and Emma. And who goes home? The pairing with the least amount of points. Now is Sam Champion and Cheryl Burke. Um, they had a couple of nice moments on the show. And Cheryl Burke, to me, has just had some bad luck with her partners. I mean... Not that I dislike Sam Champion by any stretch of the imagination, but I just don't think that she's had such great fits with her partners over the past, I'd say, five years on the show. And obviously this show used to have a, a fall and a spring season, but not anymore. So, um, very interesting as... um. Cheryl Burke and Sam Champion get eliminated from the show. And, um... So, there's two nights next week. Night one is, um, most memorable year, and night two is prom night. So, it's gonna be interesting. And by the way, the, uh, highest scoring routines, there's a three-way tie between Gabby and Val with, uh, Mr. Blue Sky... Charlie and Mark to the Simpsons main theme and uh, Wayne and Whitney for uh, Wait For It. All right, Masked Singer tonight. Um, it's going to be a new um, episode with different characters. Um, but last week um, was where the, um, the winner of the episode moves on to the semifinal. So, um, quick... Uh, talk about Mass Singer. So last week was a TV theme. Um, there are three uh, contestants or characters, I should say, because the mummies had three technical, con technically contest contestants. So the mummies went first. Um, they talked about watching people or people watching them while they grow up, uh, Tiger Pop, you see a fox, and obviously the fox was Wayne Brady and the Masked Singer. And then there's a blue bag with a house on it. And then Cinema Ticket 1. And then they performed um, the Monkees theme song. And then the uh, uh, Mystery Clue, uh, Tori Spelling came out and said... Uh, Blended Berry Bros. Like, that's what the paper said. Fortune Teller was next. Um, there was a Queen of... Card of Queens. Um, talks about not being the best singer. There was a business card, a wheel. It makes you think of a game show host, a clothing line. A box with an angel. 
and the box looked like the box from Deal or No Deal. Talks about keeping up with the Kardashians. And Fortune Teller performed Moving On Up from the Jeffersons. And then Jody Sweden made a guest appearance with the clue. Um, brings out New York Fresh Pizza Dough. Then Harp went last. She, uh, there's a couple of her previous clues, like the Wizard Hat, Night Night CD, a rocking chair. There's a Christmas cupcake, which was the new clue. And then she performed, uh, Thank You for Being a Friend from the Golden Girls. Tori Spelling came out again with another clue. This time it was a a picture of purple mashed potatoes. First unmasked was the mummies. My guess was Matt LeBlanc, Matthew Perry, and David Schwimmer of Friends. Ken said Lawrence Brothers. Jenny said the, the crew from Home Improvement. Nicole and Robin said the Brady Bunch crew. And who was it? Christopher Knight, Mike Lookinland, and Barry Williams who play Peter, Bobby, and Greg from the Brady Bunch. So Robin and Nicole were correct. Then we had Battle Royale between Harp and Fortune Teller. Um, the song that was chosen for them to perform was the theme song from Full House, appropriate with Jody Sweet in the house, and they made Ken Jung cry, especially with Harp's um, performance and rendition. And Ken said it was a great tribute to the late Bob Saget, which it was. And who moves on the harp and um, Fortune Teller goes home. My guess was Howie Mandel because I saw some game show clues and then I saw the box. that looked like the box where the, the ladies on Deal or No Deal would open up. So... Um... That's why I guessed Howie. Jenny said Damon Dash. Nicole said Ryan Seacrest. Robin said Bray J. And Ken said Damon John. And who was it? Damon John. Ken John, correct, for the first time this season. So tonight we'll see four new characters and two or three unmaskings, depending on how the episode goes. All right, Survivor. Um, new episode tonight, obviously. 8 o'clock on CBS. Um, it was a one-hour episode last week. Um, so before Immunity Reward, um, they were showing all the uh, tribes... And what they were up to. And the big story was that at Coco's tribe, Carla found the same beware advantage that Cody found on Vessi inside the open after initially leaving it. And she was able to uh, collect beads to obtain Coco's idol bracelet. And then the immunity reward challenge is that three um, contestants jumped into the water off a high platform one at a time. Then off a stack floating crates before retrieving a submerged boye with a key attached. And once every person retrieved the buoy, the remaining two tribe members used the keys to unlock puzzle pieces to solve a turtle block puzzle. And the first two tribes to finish one immunity, as well as a large and small um toolkits and fruit platters while the losing tribe had to forfeit their flint and go to a tribal council. Baca and Coco won the challenge. And then the subplot here is that Noel, James, and Owen were sent to the summit where Noel promised loyalty to the men if all three were to make the merge. And as such, James and Owen protected their votes, allowing Noel to earn a steal a vote advantage. Cody and Jesse were reluctant to uh, vote out NECA, but acknowledged the need for strength and challenges. And then came Tribal Council. Um, five votes. Um, NECA was eliminated. The vote was 4-1. NECA voted 
Noel, the rest of the group, Cody, Dwight, Jesse, Noel, all voted out. NECA. NECA should have went last week. Not just Steen. But NECA's out now. Um, I think Coco's due to go to Tribal Council. They have all six left. Um, I like this group a lot. Carla's someone that's really grown on me. Um, but somebody that I could see getting sent out. Um, and this episode, if it doesn't work out, is Cassidy. Um, I like Cassidy, but, like, I could just see a world where she's voted out. I like Carla. She's really grown on me. Lindsay, I like. I think the gentlemen on Coco are good players, especially James. I'm a big fan of James. So, I think Coco's finally due to go to Tribal Council. And if I had a blind guess who gets voted out, I'm going to say it is Cassidy Clark of Austin, Texas. All right, now I'll move on to news and notes. For today, um, not a lot of stuff. Um, so, a fun fact, not to step on Friday's pick segment, but um, or football um, going over the line segment, I should say, is that uh, Patrick Mahomes, for the first time in his career, is a home underdog. As he was favored in his first 41 home starts, but DraftKings has the Chiefs as a two and a half point underdog against the Bills. I think that's wrong. I think the Chiefs should be favored. And I'm not trying to give away who I'm picking to win the game. You'll find that out on Friday. But the Chiefs should not be underdogs. Like, this reminds me of week one where the Rams. I thought should have been favored over the Bills, but it was proven to be wrong. The Rams might not be that great this year, but this is Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs who are 4-1. and one. And not the Rams who are now 2-3. and three. So some more football is that uh, Tyreek Hill is trending towards playing against the Vikings. So that's good news. Two are expecting the practice to wet today. But unlikely to play in week six, even if he's clear from concussion protocol, but will practice on limited basis. Russell Wilson expected to play on Monday night against the Chargers. Um, Patriots running back um, Damian Harris missed multiple games due to a hamstring injury after he suffered it Sunday against the Lions. That's brutal for them. Baker Mayfield could return soon as second opinions on the ankle confirm Mayfield won't go on injury reserve or need surgery. Um, Stefan Diggs tells Von Miller some behind-the-scenes stuff detailing on being traded to Buffalo as Diggs says he was almost traded to the Jets. Oof, that's a good what-if. Um... So, college football news. Um, it was reported yesterday that Kansas quarterback Jalen Daniels was expected to miss re- the remainder of the season after suffering a grade three right shoulder separation. And then Jalen Daniels comes out on Twitter and says his reported season-ending injury is news to him. So, I don't know if... Um, there was terrible reporting by whoever reported that um, Jalen Daniels is out for the season, but Jalen Daniels doesn't seem to think so. So we'll find out. He's probably out against Oklahoma this week, though. Um, baseball news. Um, Yankees infielder DJ LeMayo left off the LDS roster. And Scott Efros needs Tommy John surgery. He was acquired from the Cubs. For Hayden Wisniewski, who is a really good starter down the stretch for Chicago. As F. Ross has an elbow issue that will need TJS. This is really bad for Brian Cashman and the Yanks. 
from a big picture standpoint. I personally am curious about this medical staff and how competent they truly are. But then again, if I'm saying they're incompetent, then DJ LeMay is probably on the ALDS roster. But this is a ginormous loss for the Yankees, not necessarily for the uh, series against the Guardians that's going on right now, but for the series against the Astros and next season, that is a huge loss. And you could just chalk up a win for that trade for the Chicago Cubs because how good Wisniewski's been. And I said somewhere, I don't know if it was on the show or on Twitter, that if the Yanks lose this Guardian series, I, I, would, I would blow it up. And fire Cashman, fire Boone, and not necessarily blow it up, blow it up, but clean house is what I mean. But if they lose to the Astros, that's a different story because you were expected to lose to the Astros. And you had a you had some injuries anyway, but you still should beat the Guardians, who are absolutely inept offensively, as we saw last night and as we saw against the Rays. Um Another bad injury for a team that's still in the postseason that's up 1-0, and that's the Philadelphia Phillies as David Robertson hurt himself celebrating Bryce Harper's home run as he uh, strains his calf. That is a brutal loss for the Philadelphia Phillies. It's going to hurt him in this Braves series. It didn't hurt him yesterday, but it'll hurt him at some point. Brutal. And Astros reliever Phil Matone is out for the postseason after he fractured his finger punching a locker. Yikes. That is absolutely brutal for Houston. Um, their deep, their uh, bullpen did a good job yesterday after um, uh, Tristan Verlander just shit the bed yesterday. Um, he was okay this season, 3.84 ERA, and I didn't realize that Will Smith was left off the... Uh, LDS roster for Houston, too. And he's a somebody that's gotten some big outs in the past, two. He had a 4.38 ERA, so he must have uh, been bad this year for by his standards. Ex-Angel Stafford sentenced to 22 years in prison for a role in the death of Tyler Skaggs. That's not surprising. Um, you knew that Eric Kay was going to... Um, get a lot of jail time. It's just an awful situation. Um, basketball news, Draymond Green will not be suspended. It has, they'll fine him for practice altercation. And Green will return to the team tomorrow, according to Steve Kerr. Um, I think he should have been suspended to start the year for like five or six games, maybe even seven. But I think because he's Draymond Green, they didn't suspend him. Lamelo Ball to miss the start of the season with a grade two left ankle sprain during the preseason game against the Wizards. You know what everybody's going to say about this. I, but we'll get to that in a second. This is not good for Charlotte. Lamelo Ball is the star of that team. He gives them the chance to be competitive. But of course, what's everybody going to say? Tank for Victor Wembanyama. You're going to be seeing so many fake injuries this year. And if one of them is to LaMelo down the stretch, then that's all you need to know, that they're tanking for uh, Webb and Yana. They might be. Who the hell knows? Um, Marvin Bagley helped off the court last night with a leg injury. That's not great for Detroit. He's someone that they're relying on to help him. Reigning player of the year, Oscar Toshibwe, to have... Minor 15-minute procedure on knee, according to Coach Cal. Return tie table to be determined, so that's not great for a Kentucky basketball. Um, Mbappe wants to join Real Madrid months after signing the $48 million per year contract. So that's really interesting as he asked to leave PSG. Merritt Paulson removes himself as the CEO of the Portland Timbers and 
Thorns following the Sally Yates um, NWSL report. Uh, that's not surprising. Um, and now we'll see uh, who will be the new CEO of those two teams. And some a big contract extension for the Sabres. Defenseman Matthias Samuelson agrees to a seven-year um, about like seven year thirty million dollar contract extension with the Sabres, so he'd be paid four point two nine annually. Um, so that's a, a good move by the Sabres locking up one of their um young defensemen long term. Last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um very interesting slate. Um of games to choose from. Um, But I'm going to go with the same pick as yesterday because I feel really good about the Dodgers. I'm going to lay a half unit, minus one and a half, at plus 114 with the run line against the Padres for my best bet of the day. That's it for the show. We'll be back tomorrow recapping everything and looking ahead to everything tomorrow. And obviously we have ALDS Game 2s tomorrow to talk about. And then News and Notes and Best Bet 2. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.